Hello and welcome back to another episode of DCS and 10 minutes for less with Mirage 2000. This is episode 12, which will be going over the radar control panel. Hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into it. Alright, this episode is going to go over the radar control panel or the PCR, but before we do that, we're going to go over some HOTAS commands we're going to use throughout the radar series. So make sure you have M2000 selected. First thing we're going to add is radar range increase, radar range decrease, radar antenna up, radar antenna down, STT and TWS toggle, TDC depress, lock target, all right, go to axis assign. We're going to need TDC slew horizontal and TDC slew vertical. I'll show you my tunes in case you need something to reference off of. All right, that covers that. Now let's actually get into the video. All right, so now we're going to identify the radar control panel. It's actually located right next to the throttle. All right, this panel right here is the radar control panel. This is going to be controlling the radar's operational modes, options, and configurations. We're going to start from the top and work our way down to the bottom. So starting at the top, this is going to be the radar emission channel selectors and channel validation button. This is where we're going to be selecting the radar's emission channels. So by default, the Mirage is going to be operating at channel 6-7. But if you have multiple mirages in the area, you're going to be jamming each other. So I'm going to go on channel 77. As you see, it's flashing. It's waiting for validation. Now we're on 77. All right, starting with the second row right here on the left side, this is going to be the radar reset switch. This is going to be in case your radar has a malfunction, you'll push this. I personally have not had a malfunction, but if you do and you push that, it's going to be roughly 30 seconds of a wait time. All right, this is going to be the Doppler filter switch. So by default, it's going to be an auto. If you flip to the top, top's going to reduce false contacts, but it's also going to increase uh, a chance to lose lock to a notch. If you flip it to auto, but which is default, it's going to increase chances of uh, false contacts and probability of track and chaff, but it's also going to improve notch and resistance. Then if you flip to the bottom, so without, you're going to get a lot of false contacts, decreased chances of losing a lock to a notch. Uh, honestly, if I'm doing air-to-air -air combat, I'd probably just leave an auto or with, but mostly I just leave an auto because that's good enough. All right, then don't worry about the gain dial switch. This is pretty much when you're going to do, like, ground mapping stuff. Right, let me move the throttle forward. Alright, so third row this is going to be the radar power knob. You're going to have off, warm up, or preheat, standby, and emit. Alright, so fourth row this is going to be the radar test button. Uh, this is not functional, but if it becomes functional in the future, all it's going to do is going to start the radar's test sequence. Alright, right here is going to be uh, your, your deck mode, ground avoidance radar, vision mode, which is going to be your ground mapping radar. Fifth row, this is going to be the radar presentation switch. So by default, it's going to be on PPI. If you want to flip to the B scope, you can. So PPI is going to be the default, just like pizza pie looking uh, radar display. Pretty much bottom is going to be you emitting and your radar is uh, sweeping. But if you like the Russian style NATO fighters, flip to B scope and you have that square style, all it's going to do is going to put your radar emission. Or, yeah, your radar emissions is just flattening it out. Alright, then right here, this A button, this is going to be your radar hardening noise gate. Uh, this is going to remove most of the false contacts, but it's going to reduce your maximum detection range. Uh, honestly, I use this a lot when I'm doing air to air combat. Alright, then right here is going to be your radar, and radar elevation type switch. By default, you're going to have uh, this. Uh, altitudes, I don't know how you would pronounce it or how you would say it, but it's going to be pretty much scanning different elevations. So, whatever altitudes you have scanning, so 6,000 feet, 19,000 feet, whatever you want. If you don't like that for some reason, you can flip it here and whatever altitude you select by 1,000, so like 12,000, will be scanning wherever the TDC is scanning at. I personally don't like that, so I'm going to leave it by default. Alright. Right here, sixth row, this is going to be your uh, persistence knob. So if you leave it to the left, pretty much any contact that's found is going to be displayed for a while. So hold on, see if we can do an example. 
just can't load it. Oh, it's just that one. Alright, so right there he just popped up. He's going to be up here for a while. So that tick is the radar scanning. So we can get another one here in a second. So we'll slip it to the right. So that's going to be pretty much uh, any target that pops up. So it's going to be a popped up for uh, two sweeps, like a false contact. So that's popped up. And he's going to be gone here in the next sweep. He just popped up. Next sweep, he should be gone. Yep. Honestly, I should leave mine on N, but if I'm doing uh, like low ground work, I will flip it to R. Alright, so right here is going to be your PFR selector switch. This is going to be selecting radar's uh, pulse repetition frequencies, but default is going to be an HFR. Uh, this is going to be used to detect contacts with high closing or opening speeds, so like a fighter jet. If you flip it to the middle, this is going to be alternating between HFR and BFR. Then if you flip it to BFR, it's going to be used to detect contacts with low radial speeds without using Doppler effects, so like helicopters. That's also going to start doing uh, your ground mapping stuff, as you can see. So let's flip the altitude up. Even in uh, the middle, you're going to still get ground mapping. So I was just leaving H of R. Alright, then right here, it's going to be uh, your bar search. So if you want to scan a 4 bar, 2 bar, 1 bar. Last row, it's going to be your range increase or decrease. So if you don't have it mapped to the HOTAS, that's how you're going to select it. So range increase, decrease. SCT select. So again, if you don't have it selected on your HOTAS, if you need to go from TWS to SCT, you'll click that. Alright, then your range your radar asthma scan so by default you're scanning at 60 degrees but if you want to you can scan at 30 degrees move it around or 15 degrees same thing you can move it around personally I just keep it at 60 alright guys so that covers this video thank you for watching I'll see you on the next one